If we accept conventional evolutionary theory. So six million years ago Antarctica is supposed to have been as cold and as frozen as it is today. And there's undoubtedly a time, they found fossils on Antarctica, there's undoubtedly a time when Antarctica was lush and green. The question is, was it lush and green during the lifetime of the human species? Yes. The theories about an ancient civilization in Antarctica, which differ significantly from mainstream scientific views, are quite intriguing. These theories speculate that a part of this lost advanced civilization was located in what is now the icy expanse of Antarctica, a striking thought considering the continent's current freezing conditions. This is linked to the hypothesis of Earth crust displacement. Suggesting that Antarctica was not always at the South Pole, but might have been in a more temperate region, allowing a civilization to thrive. However, it's crucial to note that this idea isn't supported by the current scientific understanding of plate tectonics, which doesn't allow for such rapid and dramatic shifts of the Earth's crust. The theories also delve into mythology, drawing connections between various global myths, legends, and religious texts. These are interpreted as allegorical references to this lost civilization, particularly focusing on stories of great floods or cataclysms. It's proposed that such a cataclysm, possibly a flood or a common impact, led to the downfall of this advanced civilization. According to the th theory, survivors might have traveled the world, spreading their advanced knowledge, significantly influencing the development of later civilizations like the Egyptians and Sumerians. One of the more fascinating aspects of this theory is the observation of similarities in architectural structures and astronomical alignments at various ancient sites. These are seen as potential evidence of a shared origin of knowledge, suggesting that this knowledge could have been passed down from the earlier civilization. The legacy of this civilization is believed to include not just advanced architectural techniques and astronomical observations, but potentially other lost technologies and wisdom. During the Eocene epoch, Antarctica presented a completely different world from what we see today. It was positioned over the South Pole just as it is now, but the climate was significantly warmer, fostering a unique environment. This period marked a time when the continents were still adjusting after the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea. And Antarctica, once part of Gondwana, was gradually moving to its current isolated position at the bottom of the world. The drifting apart of continents like Australia and South America played a crucial role in altering ocean currents and the global climate. One of the most notable aspects of Antarctica during this era was the absence of its massive ice sheet. This was mainly due to the much warmer global temperatures at the time. The lack of reflective ice meant that less solar radiation was sent back into space, contributing to the overall warmth of the planet. The tectonic movements during the Eocene were significant with the breakup of Gondwana reshaping the Earth's land and water distribution. A pivotal moment was the opening of the Drake Passage, the stretch of water between Antarctica and South America. This event led to the formation of the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, a massive ocean current that encircles Antarctica. This current played a major role in the climate, creating a climatic bubble around Antarctica circulating cold water and blocking warmer waters from the north. This is believed to have been a key factor in cooling down Antarctica and leading to its ice-covered state today. Fossil records from this time reveal that Antarctica supported a diverse range of plants and animals, temperate to subtropical forests with beaches, conifers, and ferns thrived. A stark contrast to today's icy desert. These fossils indicate a much warmer and humid climate. Additionally, sea levels were significantly higher than they are today due to the absence of large ice caps. This altered the coastline and land shapes, with some current land areas being underwater back then. The warmer temperatures and higher sea levels would have fostered a rich and diverse marine life around Antarctica, vastly different from the current ecosystem. The Eocene epoch, lasting from about 56 to 34 million years ago, was a pivotal period in Earth's history. It was part of the larger Paleogene period within the Cenozoic era, often referred to as the Age of Mammals. This era witnessed a significant diversification of mammals, particularly after the extinction of dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous period. During the Eocene, the continents were gradually drifting to their current positions, significantly altering ocean currents and impacting global climate. A notable event of this epoch was the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, which occurred around 56 million years ago. 
This event saw a rapid increase in Earth's temperature by 5 to 8 degrees Celsius within a few thousand years, potentially due to massive methane releases from the ocean floor. This climatic shift had profound effects on Earth's biosphere. In the oceans, certain species faced extinction, while on land, mammalian evolution and diver diversification accelerated. Atmospheric CO2 levels were also substantially higher, estimated between 1,000 to 2,000 parts per million, far exceeding the pre-industrial level of about 280 ppm. These elevated CO2 levels were attributed to factors like volcanic activity, the burning of organic matter, and less effective natural carbon sinks. A key distinction of the Eocene from the present day was the absence of major ice sheets at the poles. This contrasts starkly with the current presence of significant ice caps in both the Arctic and Antarctic. The warmer global climate of the Eocene reduced the temperature differential between the equator and the poles, leading to warmer polar regions than those of today. The lack of extensive ice coverage meant higher sea levels, with much of the water now frozen in ice caps being part of the ocean then. This had a considerable impact on marine life, altering habitats, and fostering the development of new marine ecosystems. There's a fascinating theory about an ancient, advanced civilization believed to have existed, long before commonly recognized societies like the Sumerians of Mesopotamia. This theory proposes that the timeline of advanced human societies extends back tens of thousands of years, possibly even to the last ice age. This idea represents a significant deviation from established historical understanding, which generally posits the emergence of complex societies and civilizations as a more recent phenomenon. The theory highlights the incredible architectural feats of ancient megalithic structures, such as those found at Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, Stonehenge in England, and various sites in Egypt and Mesoamerica. These structures are seen as evidence of highly advanced architectural knowledge. Additionally, the astronomical precision of these constructions is emphasized. For example, the alignment of the Great Pyramids of Giza with Orion's belt or Stonehenge's alignment with the solstices and equinoxes indicates a deep understanding of stars and seasons. This suggests that such placements were not random, but rather evidence of sophisticated astronomical knowledge. Furthermore, it suggested that this civilization possessed impressive navigational skills, which could explain the appearance of similar architectural and astronomical concepts across different continents. Beyond the buildings and their celestial alignments, the theory posits that these ancient monuments reflect a comprehensive knowledge of astronomy, integrated into the culture and religious practices of the time. There's also the suggestion of sophisticated urban planning in ancient ruins, indicating a level of societal organization and city-building knowledge not typically attributed to prehistoric societies. The theory also encompasses the idea of a global spread of knowledge. It's hypothesized that the similarities in architectural styles and astronomical knowledge across various ancient cultures around the world point to a common advanced source of knowledge. This knowledge might have been disseminated globally by the survivors of this ancient society.